What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So uh, some of you may know that a while ago I did a video on InScape. Um, InScape is a real-time rendering program, and uh, in this video I wanted to go through and uh, just, just go over some of the features again um, from their new version, and uh, just kind of give an overview of it to kind of get you introduced to the extension. And before I get started, I do want to take a second and thank my supporters on Patreon. Patreon, as you know, is the site where you can support creators that you like on YouTube, so if you like what I'm doing on the show, um, you think I'm providing some value to you, please check out that link in the notes below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so a lot of you know that one of the cool things that you can do with 3D models is you can create things like presentations and like photorealistic renderings. I know I made a couple videos about um, using Twilight Render to do stuff like that, but there's also several new programs out that are real-time rendering extensions. And so basically what that means is you don't have to do the whole click render and wait thing. They actually render this in real time, meaning you can actually like fly around in your model. It's a lot like a game engine. Um, some of those are very expensive, especially up front. Um, so they, they range in cost, but a new software that's been out for, I think the alpha was earlier this year, but now it's been released full. Um, the full version's been released is InScape. And uh, one of the cool things about InScape is how easy it is. So I think uh, you use an extension like uh, use an extension like Lumion. It's very powerful, but there's a lot of settings you have to deal with. Or one of the things that makes uh, InScape great is its simplicity. All right, this model is called Villa Concept A02 from Nikos D. Um, and you can download that from the 3D warehouse. So I've made some minor changes to it, but nothing big. I just changed the material on the ground and also changed some of the default materials. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, so that's really all that I've done. Um, everything is made by the, um, by the creator in the 3D warehouse, so all the trees, everything else like that. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to bring this in, and once you install InScape, all you have to do is click the Start InScape button. And what that's going to do is that's going to pop up the InScape window. And so when the InScape window pops up, basically what it's going to do is it's going to render your model in real time. And uh, it seems to run pretty well on my computer, especially for what it's doing. Um, I'm not sure if you have a really slow computer, you may have some issues with this. But generally speaking, it runs really well. Um, so it's really fast. And I'm going to change a couple of these settings really quick. And we'll come back and mess around with them a little bit more in a minute. But like, for example, I'm going to change the background and that's good for right now. And so basically what this is, is this is rendering this in 3D. And so you can see what it's doing is it's actually taking this uh, model and it's applying light to it. And so you can see how it's creating the shadows and doing different things with the materials like this wood material. It's also got water down here for all your water materials. So, and as you can see, all I had to do is click that play button. And I wouldn't say my computer is especially fast, but it's handling this really well, especially, and it looks really good, especially since my actual stone materials in here are the sketchy stone materials from SketchUp. So these aren't, this isn't even like really a stone material, this is the sketchy stone material. But when you back up, when you look at it, you can see that it looks really good. And so, and we're gonna go in and make a couple tweaks in just a minute, but you can see as I fly around here, um, all I'm doing is just using the, um, the arrow keys and it looks like I've got some depth of field stuff turned on so I'm gonna adjust that real quick one of the cool things about this is you can adjust like all of your uh, you can adjust all of your different camera settings and everything else um, using the InScape settings option and so you can come in here and you can adjust that you can have your model up um, at the same time but you can see how I can adjust things like depth of field to create a different look um, you can adjust brightnesses. I mean, everything is really easy. I'm, I'm by no means an expert in rendering or anything like that. And I'm able to just get in here and start going. And uh, there's some cool stuff you can do. Like you can uh, hold the shift key and drag your right arrow button. And you can actually adjust things like the time of day. And I believe one of the functions they added is they added a map function. So now there's actually a map of your model so you can see where you're at and you can actually click on different points in your model to move around which is really useful um, so that you don't get lost in your model if you want to go to certain places that sort of thing you can see how I can really easily and quickly click 
on different areas and make changes, that sort of thing. So you can see this looks really good. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're actually going to go outside and we're going to mess around with our materials a little bit. Um, because one of the things that makes Inkscape easy to use, I'm going to turn that map back off, is the way that it maps materials so you don't have to deal with a super crazy material editor or anything like that um, you can actually what it does is it looks at the names of the materials in your SketchUp model so like for example I'm gonna drag this off my screen for just a second um, like for example if I'm in my SketchUp model you can see how my ground cover right now is just kinda of the gravel material well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here and I'm going to select my face for my ground material. And all I'm going to do is there's an option here for grass rendering. Um, and so basically what that means, and I'll drag my Enscape over here so you can actually see this as it happens. But if I come in here with my materials and I add a material labeled grass or anything with grass in the description, and I put it on the ground... What Enscape does is Enscape actually renders grass on the ground. So, so that's actually applying a grass material in here to the ground. So you can see how I can take that and I can make this look really realistic just by using a material with the word grass in the description. So since this says grass dark green, it's applying this grass to this model. And usually what, so usually what I would do um, in a model like this is I would actually probably have this on my second monitor um, for the sake of recording this I have it down I have both of these on this uh, first monitor but you can run these on a second monitor and have your model up in one window and your rendering up in the other um, and then um, one of the other things that this will do that's really cool is if you have a material like if you have a water material so any any uh, material that ha that says water um, Enscape is actually going to take that and it's going to render it like a water material. So, and this is all real time, really fast changes. So, and I can hear my PC kind of spinning up a little bit, so it's definitely running a little more heavily than it usually would. And I do have a little bit nicer graphics card. I don't have my new PC with my really fancy graphics card in it yet. But what I really like about this is just how, uh, just how easy it is to use. And uh, you can do some kind of interesting stuff in here as well. Like, for example, if I was to take this material and I was to put the word grass in it, you can see Enscape would actually generate grass along that material. So that gives you some really interesting... Uh, really interesting options for, um, you know, if you wanted to create something that looked kind of overgrown or whatever, you could do that. So, um, once again, just, just really easy to use. And then some of the other functions that it has. And uh, if you guys are interested, I've thought about making a video about uh, making a tutorial about making a more like in-depth video, like more architectural, like really high quality architectural model. So if you're interested in that, let me know. One of the other functions I really like about this is you can switch this to white mode. And so, like, for example, if you are trying, and probably if you switch it to white mode, you probably want to turn your grass off. But if you're, if you're trying to give more of, like, a general, like, let's say you wanted to create more of a cardboard model look or something like that. And I'm going to adjust the light just by holding that shift key and uh, clicking and dragging with my right mouse button. But what you could do is you could add outlines to your model and make this look a lot more like a cutout so and again that was really easy to do a really quick change all you do is check a box so or drag a slider and that's what I really like about this extension is all you have to do is drag these sliders in order to change the way that things look it's got it's got some pre-built like skyboxes and that sort of thing. So one of the hard things to do when you're working with rendering sometimes is getting backgrounds into your model. Well, what they've added is they've added an option for some skyboxes. So basically, if you go to your atmosphere and you select a preset, you can click a drop down and you can select different skyboxes. So you can add like a forest or like a city or that sort of thing. So it makes it a lot easier to give some kind of like um, background and con. And context in your model so like for example if I wanted to view just like this one you can see how that skybox goes in there so it makes it look like this is actually sitting in the trees 
and you can adjust like the rotation of the skybox to change the way that things look and if you look in the windows this is actually adjusting the reflection in the windows as you go so um, really powerful um, you can do things like towns if you wanted to if you wanted this to have a town background um, there's like if you had something that was more under construction there's a construction site you know you could put like a high rise with a tower crane in the background and you can also load your own skyboxes so if you don't like the ones that are in here then you can also load other ones in here as well so you can adjust like the different cloud densities in here the cloud varieties um, all of those settings are just so easy to change that's what I really like about this you can go let's say you wanted to do more of like a later night you could create a later night rendering with like the moon you can adjust like the moon size and that sort of thing to adjust the way the lighting works so you can lighten that up you can darken that up they also have support for lights so if you want to add lighting in your model you can do that as well so and then you can also export you can do a capture of your screen I think you can also export um, an animation between different points as well so um, you can export those all the way up to 4k so there's definitely video export you can also export screenshots and that sort of thing so again very very powerful so you can download a free 14-day trial of Inkscape at inscape 3d.com I'm not an affiliate or anything like that I will note that they did provide me with a license so that I could make some videos um, but that's that's really kind of in line with what I want to do with the SketchUp essentials anyway but if you do want to give this a try go visit at Inkscape3D.com to download the free trial. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this something you're interested in? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.